everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, um, Moon Knight, episode six, the final episode. I don't know about you, Brian. I don't think we had a, a discussion about this uh, sh- the final season. If we did, it was probably brief because I don't recall. Um, but I have to say, Brian, I enjoyed it. Um, again, Oscar Isaac was fantastic. Um, especially the, the reveal, the end credit scene of that, that was hilarious. Um, what do you, or what did you think about the last, did they land the plane, Brian? (laughs) Did they land the plane? You know, it was still... It wasn't Loki's finale, which is, I think, is still clearly the best finale of any of these shows. They yeah. did, they did go to the Marvel trope of they seemingly always want to have the kind of the smash them up fight in this finale. But I'm kind of with you. I sent my the one thing I texted you was I was like, you know, they did all those things that we kind of didn't love about some of the other shows, but for some reason I was more entertained with this version of it. Yes. I don't totally know why, to be honest. Like, in some ways, it felt like at least it was committed. Like, they were like, all right, we're going to do this. We are going to have a crocodile. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> we're going to have a bird and a crocodile actually fight. Like, if we're going to do this, we're all in doing it. And I kind of I kind of respected the <laughs> the hustle of it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. and uh I actually thought, you know, the, the action didn't look pretty good. I actually thought like the, the costuming on Scarlet Scarab was, she looked pretty, she looked pretty cool. She looked dope. Was, she looked dope. I was like, this is like, I was like, I don't know. We'll talk about some of the other stuff with, with the Avatar stuff, but like the action sequencing and the choreography, I could follow it. There were some cool shots. Like this was the coolest. I thought the Moon Knight persona looked in the show. Yeah. Um, so that's why I say, like, weirdly, I felt like even though it was kind of formulaic for what these shows have become, the execution was pretty good. And then to your point, like, they made a case for season two. Like, yeah. the credit scene made a strong case to bring this back because they finally unleashed Jake Lockley. And I was like, I'll be up for doing six episodes with yeah. this guy. This guy. And yes. trying to stop this guy. <laughs> Definitely. Um... One of the things that I thought was like fantastic and that we never got to see is when you, when all is, you think that shit is over, Arthur Harrow has uh, Moon Knight on the ground and he blacks out again and then he has Arthur Harrow. I'm like, oh snap, they did it again. Yeah. (laughs) And we never got to see any of those past um, incidents where he gets out of stuff. I'm, I was sort of happy that they stuck to that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Again, um, Scarlet Sparrow was her name. Scarrow. Scarrow. Scarrow, I think. Yeah. What was her? What was her name? Layla. So I can't Layla. pronounce her. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Layla. 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 Yeah. I thought her. I thought she did a fantastic job. She was one of. Uh, I think. I think one of the favorites of that of that show. Yeah. And when she's and when she you know got into her her gear and her fighting sequences those were pretty dope um kind of like out falconed falcon yeah right yeah i don't know i was yeah. like i was like of the winged heroes we've seen i'm like i kind of feel like she's already better with her arm yeah yeah is, yeah um, yeah um what what were some of the things you didn't uh enjoy brian um there was a part of me that wanted the finale to stay in the asylum. I actually was really, I was riveted by episodes four and five and the mental game, right? This idea that he's trapped in his own mind by Harrow Mm -hmm. and he has to break out. And I kind of would have applauded them had they kind of just stuck with that and been like, the action is actually gonna be this like action of the mind. And mm-hmm. the, the finale is just going to be really him. How does he solve this? How does he get out of here? 
And so we kind of didn't get that as much. Like we only went back to the asylum after the action step pieces were done. So given how short this finale was, I felt like there was room to maybe do a little more there. So that was probably net a, a disappointment for me. I think number two would just be, I don't, I, I feel like Ethan Hawke, I kept waiting for him to get like one more big platform to kind of level up in this show. And I don't know that we ever got that. Like he no, was he didn't. excellent, but we didn't really get like the full unleash of everything he's, I assume, capable of. Yeah. He just kept it restrained all the way to the very end. And that was a choice, I think, but I don't know that it was my favorite choice um, given, given how good of an actor he is. So mm -hmm. those would probably be my two main ones. But like I said, weirdly, like this is not a finale I would have thought I would have liked as much as I did. But like when I watched it and digested it, I was like, I, I had a good time. And it was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I think it, it kept, it didn't drag down the rest of the show the way some of these other finales have. That's just, my opinion yeah yeah I, I agree with you on that um and i felt like there was a real emotion i, I like that there was an emotional payoff to him going back to get steven right yeah. like i would have kind of felt sad if we had left steven in the sand yeah and he had to do this as just mark at the end i kind of yeah. liked that there was it, it almost made me wonder if there were if they knew there was going to be a season two you could have cliff, you could have just ended the season after episode five as the cliffhanger. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And like yeah. the fact that they like, all right, we don't know that there's a season two. Like we're gonna we gotta bookend this. Yeah. You know, led to led to the choices. But no, I yeah. So but 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 overall, it didn't feel cheap, and I, I felt like it gave it gave Oscar Isaac like one more chance to, you know, flex in a different way because he was kind of handing off now, like as he was in the act, which I enjoy, like in the action yeah, where he's yeah. kind of handing off persona yeah pretty yeah. seamlessly so like i said i stand by like I, i'd be very disappointed if he's not nominated for an emmy i think this was an incredible um probably difficult and like you know listen I, I i know nothing about did um but all accounts is there's a lot of detail paid to that mm -hmm. and that this show did a very respectful job of portraying a lot of the things that are hallmarks of that condition and you know, that's, that's got to go on Oscar Isaac that he's able to bring that to life. It's really no one else's responsibility. And we said that from the beginning, Brian, like if they're going to do this, we got to believe each and one of those, each and every one of those characters have to come to life. And we have to believe that he has this condition and that he's a different person each time. And they pulled it off and you called it, man. You said that this was going to be Marvel Shakespeare and uh, and it was, it was very, very well done and very well performed. And uh, everyone, I, I, I think did a, did a fantastic job. And um, I got to look back at the tape to see where I had this. Uh, do you recall where I had this on my list? Yeah, I think it's, I think you're going to be about right. So you had it three, I had it five, and then I traded it up. <laughs> I, I, I downgraded Miss Marvel. I upgraded um, <laughs> this show, but you were right. I think I think th it's no lower than three right now. You could make a case it's two. I think. Um, I did want to ask you though: Do you want a season two? Oh yeah, this show? you of do. Want it. Okay, so they so they made the case then. Okay, of course. I mean. What kind of season two do you want? That's so that this show was really three shows, right? In the sense of it was a, it was kind of that like the mummy Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of, you know, archaeological adventure a little bit. And then it was like that deep psychology of the asylum and of the, the, the man inside his own mind. And then at the end, it was a little bit of the the, super, the true superhero movie, right? The super powered fight movie. So, like, what, what if it's season two? What do you want season two to feel like and look like? I think I would want to see perhaps certainly Jake Lockley. I want to see that. I want to see the other personas that he has where, or his uh, Stephen Grant's ascension to being possibly someone who's rich 
and 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 you know who uh, uh, probably a different Stephen Grant than what he is because he under he knows stuff now, so he's yeah. not going to be the same. No. So maybe seeing that change in him, um, and being a superhero at night, I don't know what would be. I'm pretty sure they would have to go to the comics to see what sort of storyline they would, um have for Kanshu or what purpose he has of having him around and what is he trying to do? What's the end game? Um, I don't know exactly, but these are the characters I want to see. I, I want to see a change. Obviously, again, Stephen Grant is not going to be the same. He's going to have more confidence. Is he going to develop into this rich guy persona? I don't know. But the possibility is there of him developing another uh, a persona if you know if they if they go a second season um that's pretty much it yeah so i think it's a challenging right in the sense of lockley is set up to be the villain but also to be probably the character you spend the most time with if they do yes. a season two yeah they've clearly also laid the groundwork for you know, effectively, you could argue a lot of the season is about the finding the inner harmony of these these two personalities, Mark and Stephen, right? So to your point, like Stephen leaves the season ascended a little bit, right? Yeah. Mark leaves the season kind of humbled, right? He's sort of found understanding of his past, but he's not really like if you look at like when we first meet him in the in the in the show, he's kind of this really like self assured, like kick ass kind of like in charge guy, and at the end, he's like. No, he's got a so he's got that soft side for Steven, right? That that sort of connection. Yeah. So clearly, like if they do season two, the natural thing is like, how do they find harmony with Jake, who's a far more dark, evil, done some real nasty stuff, and is probably how do they be discover him? Yeah. Empowered, right? Empowered to do worse, and you're going to have Kanshu basically trying to divide the personalities even more. So it's a really interesting idea. Is a hard execution though, because there's yeah. no like who's the Harold? Like there's no real Har you're fighting yourself literally. So like how yeah. do you stage that um, in a way that's that's original? But you're I'm kind of with you. I was like there was a point in like episode four and five where it's like I don't know if I could do a whole season of the asylum. Like it was really cool, but then like the way they left the show, I was like yeah, I'm ready for the <laughs> I'm ready for the Lockley Chronicles and. And yeah. that's sort of almost like a murder mystery where they find out it's themselves, you know, and, and they have to deal with that. So now the other question I have for you is this. Now, Moon Knight, obviously, we would assume is not going to be limited to his own show. This was a very self-contained show. And in fact, mm -hmm. the you know, the interviews have really laid bare that they, they thought about putting Echo in. There was talk of putting other characters in this show. And ultimately, Kevin Feige and the, and the showrunners were kind of like, no, like, Keep it contained. But we know that Moon Knight crosses over and, you know, can connect with some of these other stories. How do you want Moon Knight to connect to the broader MCU away from his own show? Well, there's been talk of, um, and I'm not familiar with the comic book, but um, the Midnight Suns uh, with Blade and, 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 uh, Ghost Rider and all that other stuff. So, it, it, a it could be a while before we get that. So I don't know if we wait for that, or we go along with a, a season two, and then as you know, they develop that sort of storyline while they're doing this. Uh, Oscar Isaac said, you know, and I think it seems pretty. It seems to be the constant in actors potentially coming back for uh to to go at it again only depending on the story that they're going to do they want to do these guys want to do something quality they don't want to do morbius you know they don't they don't want to do something they don't want their spider-man threes they don't want their amazing spider-man twos they want to do something that's interesting and that's why as oscar isaac did this first season they didn't sign up for a second season because they didn't know what the second season was going to be about. I don't know, but he only signed up for one. Um, but the hope that he, is that he does. Uh, I think he knows that he's going to probably pop up in other stuff. 
but we don't know about a season two. I think they made the right decision to make this a show and not a movie. I, I don't think this works as a two-hour oh, no. product. Oh, the heaven. explorations they did. You need the time. You need the time. And I think this character, because of the the examination of the person's sides of a personality, it's just so much more conducive to TV. Although I will say, because I love and respect what Oscar Isaac did, he has created this character where I do think you can put Mark and Steven into like an Avengers movie and you can write some really fun scenes where those two personalities are interacting with other Avengers and kind of disorienting, you know, the team that mm -hmm. could be some, there's some good stuff in there. Like if you, like, if you had like, if he's having a conversation, I'll just throw a random one. If he's having a conversation with Thor and like you turn him and Hemsworth loose to kind of just like play off each other. And it's like, Thor's talking to Steven one moment about history and archaeology, and he's talking to Mark another. There's some good stuff in there that you can work into a movie and not have Moon Knight be the lead. Um, but I think for his character development, it, he's a TV character. I've heard some people, I heard of this one podcast that was saying, like, much rather have seen it as a movie. I, I can't disagree more. This is a TV character, and it works well, well as a TV character and a character yeah. study. So, yeah. Wasn't that same guy in the Ringiverse? As you yeah, was one, yeah, the same guy that I don't, that one of the guys I don't usually agree with. Yeah, it was. He, he was arguing for a movie. And I, I was like, I, I, I think his argument was that the Moon Knight effects were not up to movie standard and he wanted more of the Moon Knight persona. And that's something that only a movie budget-wise would have afforded. And I'm like, but I thought the strength of the show was generally the not the Moon Knight persona yeah. to where like at the end when they brought out the Moon Knight persona, but it was like, unleashed with the two of them in harmony it was more rewarding i thought that way so no, i i think it's a great tv they, this was a good tv choice by them yeah yeah so who knows hopefully we get a season two let's see what the future holds for that character we're definitely going to be seeing him again um but it's going to be a long road because there's a lot of characters that he needs to introduce in order to make that happen um so do you have it Three or two now. Yeah, listen. And this this not may may not be a, a popular stance, but although I still have it highly up there, WandaVision for me wasn't all that. In my opinion, they had some good moments, but the Ralph Boner stuff, the first three episodes. Yes, I'm with you. You know, there was good stuff, but it's in its entirety. For me, Loki from start to finish probably had like one episode where it was a little bit slow, but that's fine. That's just one episode. WandaVision, you need to see, sit there for three episodes yeah. to get into it. You had to, right? And then with Moon Knight, so for me is Loki, Moon Knight, um, you know what? I, I want to say Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but that last scene just kills it for me, yo. One of his, that long, I think one of his is better. Than yeah, that. yeah. That long speech kills it for me. But I think what I like about Cap Falcon and the Winter Soldier was Carl Lumley and his and that yeah. if they would have explored that band, I think we would have had a fantastic um, series there. I still enjoyed it. Brian. Yeah, John uh, Walker, I think, is excellent. I think Wyatt Russell does a great job. It has real high points, but man, it ended so flat. That's the one that, like, we went into it expecting a Winter Soldier type ending. We just we didn't get it. It didn't, didn't happen. So. Yeah. So you have it too. I'm with you. I, I have I have Loki one, Moon Knight two, WandaVision three, um, and then I probably would have Falcon 4 and then What If 5. That's probably where I'd be at. Uh, am I missing one? Oh, sorry. I'd have Hawkeye. Ooh. Brian, Hawkeye, I liked Hawkeye. I kind of would put Hawkeye they, 4. They but the end me. is rough, man. The red is rough. That's what I mean. Hawkeye and Falcon kind of have the same flaw, which is like, the show has these real high points and they blow it at the end. Killed it. They killed, yeah, they, they, and killed it in a bad way. Killed it, you know, usually means in the hood. They did a fantastic job. Not, not this time, not with Hawkeye. To me, the, what's, what's this guy's name? 
the kingpin. Yeah. yeah, that that was a letdown. It just felt childish to me. <laughs> you know, felt goofy. So, yeah, so they're pro- so so Hawkeye and Falcon are probably in the same tier. And then, you know, and then yeah, honestly, then what if probably has been the for me the biggest disappointment, but but yeah, that's probably how it slots. It's sort of like Loki's in its own tier. Then I think Moon Knight some people, a lot of people would have WandaVision in the same tier, but I think that's probably your two, two, three, and then, yeah. and then a drop off to to Hawkeye and Winter Soldier. So, so we still got Miss Marvel, She Hulk. That's about it, right? Oh, no, Loki Secret, season Secret two. Invasion. That's the one. That, Secret, Secret Invasion, Invasion is the one I think. Like, if we're looking at what's on the board, that that has to be a candidate to be the, if not the best show, at least in the running for it. With the cast they have, and kind of the built-in, the built-in story that they can tell, uh, yeah, that's the one I have real high hopes for. Do you think we get six or eight episodes? That's a good question. You know what? I'm gonna say eight. Forty-five minutes each. Nah, they seem to like mixing it up. They seem to like doing like thirty-five to forty, kind of Mandalorian style, but. For some reason, I think like we've generally gotten six, but then like what if had more, and Fal- and uh, WandaVision had nine, because they were half hour shows pretty much. That's right. So I, I kind of feel I don't know. I just have a feeling like one of these shows is they're going to try something a little bit longer, and I feel like Secret Invasion is the one that makes the most sense. She all could going to be six for sure. Miss Marvel, I think, is going to be six. She Hulk um, is going to be six thirty minutes. It's gonna feel like three hours each. Um, <laughs> I don't know. No, I I just think it'll be six episodes. But yeah, I don't know. I, Thirty to four. Thirty to forty. That's probably what most of them will be. Oh man, I'm gonna decide just to see She Hulk, just to see what it's gonna look like, what this is gonna be, because we've been trashing, <laughs> and it would be humbling for it to be like the best thing they've done. So let's see. Let's see. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Moon Knight uh, series. And uh, would you like to see a second season of this show? I'm pretty sure most of you would. Um, But yeah, that's our show. Brian, any last words? No, I'm still excited to see Miss Marvel. Again, I think this is going to be different territory. Uh, I did want to throw out there, Kevin Feige, you should look it up. He's talked about why the powers are different, which I think is one of the things that stands out. She doesn't have the stretchy, the stretch, I don't know what you want to call it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Elasticity. Yeah. She apparently Correct. doesn't really have that in this show. She's She's got more like the Captain Marvel um, cosmic energy or whatever, but I'm still looking forward to it. I think it'll be, you know, Marvel going into territory that's probably not my wheelhouse, like it's younger audience, that sort of thing, but... I'm still, I still, I still think there's room to room to enjoy it. So I am looking forward to it. One thing, and I'll cut this into the Doctor Strange too. How, when you saw Black Bolt, what did you feel? You mean the first time I see him on screen versus yeah. what happened to him? What, what happened when it was very cleverly done, I mean, although it reminded me immediately when I saw what I saw, it reminded me of The Matrix. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was cleverly done how they did it. See, I thought that, th- again, I thought that was a meta moment of the Inhumans was so bad and it's such a misfire. That I thought that there was a little bit of like, we're going to waste this dude. <laughs> Quickest, most brutal way possible to acknowledge that that show was trash. Done. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first saw him, I don't know that I had much of a reaction to be honest. Like, like I said, like because of that baggage, like Anson Mount played this character. He's now, as I said, he's Captain Pike on Strange New Worlds, which supposedly mm-hmm. is getting a lot of buzz mm-hmm. as being pretty awesome as a Star Trek show. So like. I just don't have that like, affinity for like the character or like his portrayal of it to where I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like I would say like of the characters seeing them visually, look, I, I mean, 
the nerd out moment is hearing the X-Men music. I'm sorry. Yeah, like that, yeah, to me, yeah. the number one thing, when they played the theme and I saw the yellow thing, I'm like, I don't care if the scene stinks. That was still yeah. like goosebumps, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And yeah. I will say, like, I think Haley Atwell looked great as Captain Carter. I think oh, she, yeah. she cut a really cool costume and figure. And then, yeah, I mean, the Krasinski thing is something people wanted for a long time. So I feel like next to that, and Lashana Lynch, we know is kind of, that's like actually sort of happening in a weird way, right? Yeah. So I, I kind of feel like the Black Bolt thing was almost like an afterthought. It was like, oh, there he is. Like, okay, that rumor was true. And then like, yeah, yeah I, kind of, I kind of enjoyed the way he was. Was there, was there a rumor that Black Bolt was going to be in it? There was a rumor that Black Bolt was going to be in it, yeah. I think it would have, if... I think the best choice for Black Bolt or the best actor to play Black Bolt is Vin Diesel. You don't got to oh. memorize no lines. You don't want that, though. <laughs> You've been reading the stories about what's going oh, yeah. on with Fast 10? You don't want that. Oh, yeah. None well, of us want that. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he always wants control, man. That's he's like his own franchise. I, I, I think they, they, they got what they needed from Groot, and like, and that's let's, it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. let him. Let's let him duke it out with the studios. There. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I uh, so I, I, I guess I didn't feel overly fired up to see, or, or like feel like I was seeing a reboot of the Inhumans. Like I didn't really think, you know, I think it was interesting too, while we're on this discussion, I think it's very deliberate that Namor was not in that. Scene, of course. Yes. Right. Cause like he's an original member in theory of the Illuminati, but we know that Namor's coming in the 616 universe. And I think with what they did to the 838 Illuminati, they wanted to keep him out of that. Out of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Do, do, do you do you know? Um, do you Black Panther is also uh, a, a member of the Illuminati as well? Um, I think perhaps they left them off because they didn't want to kill Black Panther again. <laughs> oh, God. Well, okay. If you want, if you want to, if you want to lose people in a hurry. <laughs> Put T'Challa and the Illuminati in that scene. That would have been, hey, we're honoring Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Oh, my God. That would have been absolutely traumatic. Yeah, There'd that, be people I, protesting theaters if they had yeah. done that. Um, but that's our show for today. Hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share with your friends. And we will see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. All right. That's what a, what a, what a, oh, my God. What a dark idea that was. <laughs>